Hey everybody, this is Cosmic and just want to welcome you to this first installment of, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to call it yet, maybe something like the art of science, but I uh, haven't come up with an exact name for this yet, but what I wanted to do is just um, give you all a little view into uh, what I'm doing with this um, Jupiter Moon data that I have here and what I wanted to do was just sort of show you what the process is to go from just completely raw um, image data that I took off the telescope and I reduce it, I calibrate it, and then I make um, various measurements and whatnot and you can sort of see see what that process is so here we go I'm gonna pop up the video that I made made here and I'm just gonna sort of try at least to uh, walk you through it so this is data that was taken on the 19th of June 2019 and this is some of the raw data. In fact, this is all, all the raw data there. Um, this is all FITS data. So what I'm doing first is I am just making a list of all the dark frames I took. And then I'll go over to IRAF and I will get to the right place, uh, 19th of June. Um, and I will create what's called a master dark by using a command called incombine in, inside of IRAF. So I just have to provide that with a list and then an output master dark dot fits and the combination is going to be an average. Bam! It just does it. So now I've got a master dark for that um, data set. I'm just going to display it here just to let you know what that uh, looks like. I think I had to chase a cat away or something there. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to display it and you'll see that uh, what we've got here is just a nice relatively flat dark. You can see a bunch of bad columns, bad pixels there and all that, but looks good. You know, it looks like a normal dark. So now the first thing that I have to do is I have to uh, do what's called calibrating my data. So what that what that means is that I, um, and I'm not quite sure why I'm flying all, all, all over the place, um, is that, is that um, I need to, um, I'm not quite sure what, I don't remember what exactly I'm doing here. I'm going to listen to the audio while I'm watching this, but I don't remember. I was looking for a script. I know that, a Perl script of some sort, but I'm watching this after the, oh, that's right. I'm looking for my master flat. So yeah, this is part of the calibration process. And that is I take the raw data, I subtract the master dark that I took at the time, and then I divide by the master flat. And the master flat, I've got three of them. I've got one for my red filter, one for my green filter, and one for my blue filter. Um, I'm gonna go over right now and see what filter I was using on this data set and I can do that by looking at the image header which is just a bunch of um, metadata over there so I can just look at the first one and you can see right there it says filter equals green so filter equals green so that is the one that I want there's a GRN for green and then there are a few flats you know, depending on when I took them and there it is master flat green dot fits so that's that's what I want to do so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, um, create a bunch of lists 
because IRAF will work on equal length lists. So I take the first list and I convert a little bit of the text to what I want the output to look like and I write that to a file. It's one of those bad typing days so I've got a lot of typos and then I make another change dark norm and then I write that to yet another text file is the list. Okay so now what I can do is I can do my image arithmetic imarith on my that's my raw data minus the master dark and I'm going to put that onto another list that is the dark subtracted targets and I think there were 500 of them so this takes a little little bit of time to do that but this is uh, this is real-time operations here just calibrating the data okay so now it's dark subtracted now I need to flat field it so I take the target dark list and I divide by my master flat which I have a path to so here's a path so I copy that over and then I look for master flat and there it is and then an output list which is dark normalized in this case I mean I call it normalized it's just flat fielded so that doesn't take too long I can do a quick min max on that on that uh, list get all the data values so they display nicely and I can go ahead and display one of the images I just sort of grab a random one there 488 it looks like well oh, bad bad typing bad typing so I'm setting a range a display range there so there there it is there is Jupiter and at least three of its moons three of its moons okay so now I've switching over to another computer and we're going to take a look at the motions of these moons so this is the one that was on the 19th of June at 359.54 so you can see Callisto and Ganymede and Europa there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing things down in my notebook I think all good scientists should should have a, a notebook to write things in so now I'm looking at the order just from left to right so that's CG and I'm sort of hesitating here am I going to put I down yeah I did J and E so that's Callisto Ganymede EO Jupiter and Europa so now I'm going to look at my charts again and I'm going to flip back and forth between the beginning of the observing run and the end and you'll see that they slightly just barely barely slightly move and it looks like they're all moving um, from east to west so knowing that I can go back to my little chart and I can say okay CGI and E are all moving to the right which means C, G, and I are getting closer to Jupiter and Europa is moving further away and then I just I think I decide to make a little note that EO is not going to be visible there okay so then next thing that I have to do is I have to pull the photometric data out out of uh, well I've got to run my measurement code and then I have to pull photometric data out of that measurement code and how I do that is by identifying which moon is which and that 
really, it's all that really entails is um, um, looking and seeing how how the distance between a detected moon and Jupiter changes over time. So in order to run this um, measurement code, I actually have to go back. Um, part of what my code needs is the distance between Jupiter and the observer and the right ascension and declination of Jupiter. It uses uh, the right ascension and declination to compute um, the hour angle, which is one of the positions in the sky, and um, uh, um, our angle and mm. something else. Um, okay, so I think, yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm going to have to go back to the JPL Horizons website and actually get that information there. So I, I need to go through all this stuff. And I'm glad you know, that you get to see this a little bit because, you know, it's sort of like, oh, no, 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 I'm not going to the right place, not going to the right place. So I finally get to the right place. We want that to be Jupiter and that to be a location on the Earth. Top secret location. Uh, so now I need to change the date, which is going to be eventually going to be just the date of the observation. Start time in minutes and the stop time in minutes, hours and minutes. So you'll see me changing all that around here. Start time is going to be 3. 59 and the stop time is going to be I think about like 444 I think I don't remember exactly same same date for 444 yeah okay so and then I changed that to a step size of one minute and I hit the generate ephemeris and <laughs> Nothing happens, so it's like, what is going on? And it's like, ah, oh, yes, I see it. The stop year is 2020, so that's just too much data. It barfed on that. Change it to 19. Hit the ephemeris. Bam. There it is. But I realized that the RA and DEC are in decimal degrees. I need uh, hours, minutes, and seconds, and degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I, I sort of grumble about that a little bit because, um, you know, there are many ways to solve that problem. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here. Why did I go down? I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay, because uh, I was going to write down the rest of the deck there. Um, so I can do the distance in astronomical units. That's not going to change. Oh, but then I get I get to the R8 and it's like, oh man. So I quickly change the parameters a little bit there and get the hours, minutes, and seconds for RA and the degrees, minutes, and seconds for uh, DEC. I, of course, mess up a little bit and 1708. 35.85 seconds. Deck negative 22, 20, 43 point, I think that's 43.6 if I remember right. I'm looking at it here. Yeah, so that's, that's what I saw on the screen. So now I can go back to that Jupyter Info file and enter all this information. So distance, Oh, I did a comma there. <laughs> so there's the RA, 1708, 
35.85. Deck is whoop, negative 22, 20, 43.6. Okay, so now I also have a couple of other FITS files that might be used. In this case, they're not being used, so I call them zero. They just are zero valued arrays that are the same size as um, the image in terms of X and Y. And so I just take two images, I subtract one from itself, and that will make a zero file. So if I need it, I've got it now. In this particular case, I don't need it. So now I can run my main um, photometry program. And there it goes. So it's going to be writing to a text file called output underscore a. And we'll take a look at that, I think, when this is done. It runs through um, 500 images pretty, pretty quickly. So there's the output of that. It's just a big, a big mess. But let's start plotting some things. Most important thing to plot is the distance between Jupiter and the detected moon. So let's take a look at that, what that looks like just like that. So on the bottom is time, UT time, and on the left is the number of pixels. Um, zero, of course, is going to be the center of um, Jupiter. And as you can see, there are three, three very, very distinct lines there. Each of those is one of the three moons that we can see. Don't know which one is which, though. Not yet. But let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, so I am going to zoom in on one of those lines. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just eyeball it. I'm going to write down the X and Y um, coordinates there. See the 4.00102? Yeah, so I'm going to write that number down. Here we go. I'm going to write it down. And then I'm going to go to the end of that line. I don't know if I panned up again or not. No. So I'm going to go to the end of that line and write down those coordinates. And I'm just eyeballing it. But I want to be able to draw a straight line through, through that data. So that's for Europa which is the one on the right. See the diagram above, the CGI, JE. So Europa is moving, is moving away. So now I'm going to look at this one. And let's see, that's going from about, I don't know, what am I going to do? 20 to 40, there we go. Maybe I'll make it 20 to 30. So again, I just sort of go on this side and I just eyeball it. So that's going to be, uh, that was the next furthest one away. So that was Ganymede. And I'm going to write down those two coordinates. And then I'm going to go to the end of that line and write down the coordinates again. And I take this out to four or five decimal points. It, it's, uh, that's probably a little extreme, but that's okay. So then I'll do the same for Callisto, that, that top line. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just plotting. Oh, here, I'm actually going, going to show it. OK. So there is Callisto's distance from Jupiter versus time. So then I'm just going to go to the beginning of that and get a, uh, get a coordinate. That first number, of course, is the UT time. And the second number is the pixel distance. 
from Jupiter. It's either going to be positive or negative. If it's negative, then the moon is west of Jupiter, and if it's positive, it's east of Jupiter. So there I'm going to the other side of that line. So now what I have to do is I have to, to um, compute the slope and intercept of these lines. Uh, there's a famous um, formula y equals mx plus b and so I've got an x and a y which I am typing in and I do that at the beginning and the end x and y and I will get a slope and an intercept. m is the slope and b is the intercept. So then I'm going to write those numbers down. So m is, in this case, negative 5.495, and b is a negative 69.41907. So I write those down. That's for EO. Now I'm going to go, or I'm sorry, um, Europa, right? Yeah, Europa. So now I'm going to go on to um, Ganymede. Going to fill in those numbers again. Get a slightly different slope, slightly different intercept. So that's a negative slope in this case, just like Europa's was. So I'm writing those down. So now I'm going to do Callisto's. This is just a, as you can see, it's just a spreadsheet. Type in the numbers and the slope and intercept are calculated for me autom automatically. So there's the last one, 4.79775, 115.63904. Okay, so what do I do next? So now, I've got a Perl script that will take that output underscore A and just find, so yeah, it'll just find um, the um, values that lie along that straight line in terms of the distance. What I'm showing you now, what I'm going, going to show you now, um, as soon as I'm able to figure it out, is uh, photometry. And, you know, these moons are relatively uh, similar in brightness, so their photometry overlaps. So there's, there's no real way to um, pick them out except by, well, at least one way is doing it you know, the way that I'm doing it in terms of identifying which moon is which and um, um, correlating you know, the distance with, with that. So there are the photometric um, measurements of all three moons and you can see it's a jumbled up mess. Now a little bit of that is because of noise but what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, run this little Perl script again where I give it the slope and the intercept and it will grab any um, distance uh, or, or any photometric values that have that, well, that lie along that distance line. So that was for Europa. I'm doing it for Ganymede. 6672. <coughs> now I'm doing it for Callisto. It's the same input file all, all, all the time. It's the output A, but I'm just extracting different pieces of information here. So now I can come over here and I can do Europa and I'm going to do them all. I'm going to do Europa and Ganymede and Callisto with different colors. And I've got to go back and 
change that to Cal and change that to GAN and well, not quite there yet I'm not reading the right columns so I've got to look and see what columns I got to do here 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 we go uh, uh, yeah there we go one two three four five six seven eight three and eight not four and twenty two so you can see that I didn't see there was a four and an eight so I'm going to do this and it's going to mess up again <laughs> but then I finally get it it's like oh that's got to be a three so one two three haha -ha. okay so I changed that to a three and that to a four or to a three and that to a three and here here we go so there's all the photometric data is separated out now and I go back to the original to see that it's like yeah it's, I mean it's all there okay so let's see what do I do next here What I want to do now is I want to uh, plot f um, photometric value versus orbital phase. And I'm doing this in two, two different ways, in sort of an absolute way and in a relative way. So let's see, I'm not quite sure what I'm, what I'm looking at here. Oh, I'm looking at the sky. So I've got a measurement of the target itself and a measurement of the sky around it. So you can sort of see what the sky, um, the background sky, is doing here. And you can see for Ganymede, the background sky is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And that's because it's moving closer and closer to Jupiter. Um, Callisto and Europa are not affected yet by Jupiter, so their sky is relatively dark. Yeah, I think I'm going to show that here. So there is Ganymede, that one close in, and we're actually going to look, I'm going to make a little short movie here. Um, and I, what I'm trying to do is go, I'm going to do the first image in the data set and the last image in the data set, 499. And it just so happens that they, they're really, really close to one another. But what you'll see here, I'm going to center these up a little bit so I can then blink them back and forth. What you'll see you'll see um, some rotation but you'll also see that the moons move and you can see very very clearly that Ganymede is moving closer to, to Jupiter so its background sky is going to be a little bit uh, more as it moves so that's sort of what we're seeing there you see how it's starting to get into the glare there and that's why the background sky there is going up. And there's also um, field rotation which which I haven't um, taken to in, I haven't um, taken into account because it doesn't matter in this case. Because I'm just measuring distances and brightnesses. So I don't really care where the objects are. Um, in the field of view. All right, so I think what I'm doing now is I should be moving towards being able to, yeah, so I want to be able to plot um, photometric value, brightness, 
versus phase versus the orbital phase. Um, so in order to do that, I need some information from the JPL Horizons website. So I think I'm going to go over there now. In, in, in fact, I think I've already got all that info. I just need to rerun a script because uh, I changed a few things in it. So I just need to run it again for Europa and Ganymede and Callisto. And, you know, it's named Run It, <laughs> of course. So I'm just going to change the date. So I'm looking at the right data here. So there's Callisto. And then I'm going to run Ganymede. So what this does is that this just um, computes the orbital position of these moons relative to Jupiter. I even do from EO just just because. Yep. So that's showing our minute second XYZ and phase and orbital phase. I know that probably went by really, really fast, but that's how it goes. So now I just have to copy these over to my uh to my uh thumb drive and I do a sneaker net over to my other machine so I copy this over onto the thumb drive and then I eject the thumb drive and I pull it out of one machine I push it into another and then I move over to that other machine and I'm going to copy that information over Get out of the way there. So they're copying 19th of June 19. Whoop, I gotta do the dot at the end. There we go. Okay. So now what I want to do is uh, I want to run this thing, it's called phase.pl, and that will correlate the observed photometric values with the orbital phase, hence, hence the name. So I do that for Europa, and I like to check things afterwards just, just for fun. So that's the phase versus photometric value. There's Ganymede, gotta change it there, and gotta change it there. Gab and Callisto. So EO just isn't visible on this night. Okay, so I've got those those three and those should look nice. So the other thing I can do is uh, relative um, photometry. So so Europa versus Ganymede, Europa versus Callisto and Ganymede versus um, Callisto. And so I can do that. Europa versus Callisto, Ganymede versus Callisto. And I like to check these things. Yep, looks like they're there. And then I'm gonna plot those. So I'm trying to find one so I don't have to uh, <laughs> so I don't have to type it all. Here we go. So you can see these are quantized a little bit. See how everything they look like they're in columns. That's because um, the JPL Horizons website only has a resolution down to one minute, and I have many observations in one minute. So they just sort of stack that way. But you can see that the relative um, photometry, this is Europa versus um, Callisto, there is Ganymede versus Callisto, pretty consistent. There, there are some ups and downs. 
I can look at the different phase. I can either look at Ganymede's phase or Callisto's phase. The phase is on the on the um, x-axis and the magnitude difference is on the y-axis here. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, okay. I'm just messing around a little bit now with, with um, 3D plotting instead of 2D just to show you what that's all about. So phase is on the bottom and there and the magnitude difference is on the vertical. You can sort of see what that data looks like in sort of a 3D way. It's kind of cool. So that's Ganymede and Callisto. We can look at Europa and um, Callisto. <clears throat> there it is. You can see the phase along the X and Y and then the magnitude difference along Z. And you can see that, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's not too large of a scatter. It's pretty good. And pretty consistent. So I'm going to look, look again. Europa and Ganymede along those two phases. It's fun to play with these 3D things. Okay, what else do I have here? Uh, what else can I look at? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to look at next here. Okay, so I'm. I'm looking at the actual photometric values now for Europa and Ganymede. In this case, it's going to be Europa. So these are the photometric values, the actual fluxes. And I'm going to fix that so I get the full scale. 0 to 65,000 is good enough. So there it is. So that, those are the actual measured photometric flux values and as you can see it's not staying straight so I don't know what's up with that this is Ganymede so Ganymede's a little brighter than Europa and let's see what else do I do oh I do uh, so there's Europa again and then I think I switched to Callisto, column five and column seven. Yeah, Callisto is pretty faint. Uh, so now what am I doing? I've got to go back to column eight is the um, difference in magnitude. So there we go. Pretty consistent. So that doesn't look too bad. Okay, what else did I do here? Don't remember what else I did. Oh yeah, I just did some 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 simple statistical analysis, looking looking at the uh, um, average. Um, photometric magnitude differences and seeing seeing uh, how consistent they are and how much of a spread they are but in order to do that I had to find <laughs> I defined a little a little script so I am looking for it I think I found it yep it's called stats.pl and so I sort of look at a couple of these and it's like, oh, I don't want anything that complicated. I've got a bunch of these all over the place. So, But I think if I just use stats.pl, that'll give us what 
what we want. Yeah. So it just reads in a, a, a data file from a certain column and just computes the, the mean and standard deviation of that list. Stats.pl. And it's going to be, yep, yeah, I, I had to look and see what I had to give it. Uh, yep, I want that one. And I think I want column seven, but I thought it was nine. So now I have to look. Europa Ganymede, whoop. <laughs> More than one way to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 4.4646 4, 4, 6, 4, 6, plus or minus 0. 0.2. So that's not very good. But that wasn't exactly a straight line either. Uh, Europa Ganymede. And you'll see that it is not a straight line. Mm. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, see, it's not a straight line. It drops off there at the end. So that's probably why that standard deviation is so high. But that's OK. I mean, I'm not expecting lines. I'm expecting wiggles like that. I just don't know what kind of wiggles, what kind of amplitude. Uh, where all of that okay well that's it so all right everybody that's it for now thanks for tuning in hope you sort of enjoyed that a little bit and uh, yeah I will keep you updated on this very interesting project and and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes I think I'm pretty close to actually starting to write the paper so pretty close okay everybody Take care. I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.